Our next topic is on how to build and maintain heaps. And this will be illustrated by the flows out of Pu'u'o'o building up the heap of Kilauea. We need to ensure the heap property that parent keys are greater than or equal to those of their children. So a useful strategy that we see sometimes in computer science is rather than constructing a data structure property from scratch, assume that you have components already constructed and need to restore the property after an incremental change. And that's the strategy taken by Max Heapify. So Max Heapify assumes that the left and right subtrees of the node I that it's called on are max heaps. You call it on A sub I, which may or may not be smaller than the, its children, so it's intended to fix the heap property when a change is made at a node A sub I. So the subtree rooted at I will be a heap. Well, let's look at the code here. First, it gets the indices of the left and right children using these procedures that, remember, do the basic math of left child is 2i, right child is 2i plus 1. And then it does a series of comparisons to figure out which is the largest. Is the left child the largest? Is the right child the largest? Or is it still i? And in the end, if the largest is not i, it will exchange i with its largest children child, and then it will recurse max heapify on that child. So the basic idea here, like right here, we see that for, in this case, since this is at index 1, this is at index 2, this is index 3, at 4, 5, 6, 7, remember in our array representation, 8, 9, and so on. So suppose we call this on a so 2, because we want to restore, we've written some new information in here or changed the value of this key, and we want to restore the heap property. So here we see, well, first of all, the left child will be uh, at an index 4, and the right child will be index four, uh, you know, 2i plus 1, 5. So it will compare to these two children, and then it will see that the left child has the largest key, and then it's going to swap the two. So I'll do that. So the basic idea is to percolate something down until it gets to where it belongs in the heap. And of course, the same thing is going to happen here. It, on the uh, recursive call right here, we are now recursing on max heapify of 4. So the second call will be on a of 4, which is now where the key 4 is. And it will look at the left child at index 8 and the right child at index 9, which is 2i plus 1. Figure out which one has larger key. Realize that this one is larger and percolate it down. So we see we now have the heap in the state we want it to be in, but what happens in this next call? It's going to call it with uh, a of 9. So why won't it blow up? Well, it asks, uh, it gets the left and right indices, which are going to be uh, 18 and 19, and it checks that it's within the heap size, and it's not, so that won't execute. This largest is i will execute, so largest will be 9. This one, again, will make sure that it doesn't try to go out of the bounds of the heap. And so here, largest will be i, and then the whole thing will return. So rather than writing a big monolithic program that can, the only thing it can do is take some unsorted data and organize it in a heap. By writing this program that handles a piece of the problem, we can actually use this, this program in many ways. When we know that we've changed something in the heap, we can call this to restore the heap properties. So we're going to see it be used in a couple of ways. What about the runtime of this algorithm? Well, informally, it's pretty easy to see. Lines 1 through 9 are a constant amount of work. And the only growth as a function of the size of the data would be the recursive call to max heapify. And we have seen that we're percolating something down a path, potentially from the root to the leaves. So the number of times that can be called is at most log n, because we know the heat is log n high. So we're expecting theta of log n for the worst case, or big O of log n for the general case. 
We can do this a little bit more formally with the master theorem. The worst case is when the last level of the heap is half full. So you've got the most possible nodes in the left-hand side to have to deal with. And a little bit of reasoning can show that that means that the children's subtrees, in other words, if we're dealing with this node, the subtrees of the two children can have at most 2n over 3 nodes. So if we add the cost, t of n is the cost to process those 2n over 3 nodes plus theta of 1. So we have a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2 thirds, f is equal to 1, and we're going to compare f of n, which is 1, to big O of n to the log base b, which is 2 thirds of a, which is 1, which is big O of n to the 0, which is 1. So it actually comes out to be equal. That puts us in case 2 of the master theorem, giving us theta again of n to the log base b, 2 thirds of a, which is 1, times log n. But we already know that this part is 1, n to the 0, which is 1. So that gives us the result of theta of log n. So let's take a closer look at what it takes to build a heap. Well, a heap is built by the procedure of build max heap. And to illustrate it, suppose we load a bunch of numbers into an array. They're not in any particular order. And we fill the array from left to right. Now, just by virtue of the definition of the array representation of a binary tree, just writing the numbers from left to right into an array already guarantees that we have the property that it can be interpreted as a binary tree like this. The only problem, of course, is that it doesn't satisfy the heap property. There's keys that are the children of nodes with smaller keys. Now, as I said, we're going to use max heapify as a subroutine in accomplishing other useful things. And so here is our first example. Uh, max heapify requires that the, at the node that it's called on, the subtrees below that node be already be heaps. Well, how can we guarantee that if we've just ordered, loaded these in an arbitrary order? Well, the leaves are already heaps. Each leaf has a key that's greater than the, leaf, than the keys of all of its children, because there aren't any children. So we know that we can just as assume that these are heaps, because they are. And so we just have to start on the nodes that are of indices lower than the leaves. Now look at what we have here, 7, 8, 14, 9, 10. So we have to start at node number 5. You may recall the previous theorem that the leaves are the nodes indexed by positions n over 2 floor plus 1, n over 2 floor plus 2, up to n. And this, of course, fits the situation here. We have 10 nodes in the array, n over 2, that's 5, plus 1 is 6. The leaves begin at position 6. So that's why max, the build max heap starts at position a length divided by 2, in other words, n over 2 floor. So we can start here and down to 1. It's going to work our way up here. So essentially we're starting here, and then we go to here, 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 and here, working our way up the tree. So as we work our way up, we know that everything below so far has been turned into a heap. So let's work through this example. And I've put the indices of the items in the tree here so we can see the correspondence. Well, we're going to call this on build max heap of A. A dot length is 10. That's going to be the heap size. So now we're going to run I from the floor of A dot length over 2, which is 5, down to 1. So we're going to start by looking at this position, which again is the first non-leaf node that we need to check. And we're going to call max heapify. 
So max heapify would be called on A and this position here, and or this one here, and it looks at the children, which are positions 10 and 11, you know, I, 2i and 2i plus 1. And of course, there's nothing at 11. It looks at 10. It says, this is in order. The parent is bigger than the child, so it doesn't do anything. So it returns. So now i is going to be set to 4. Okay, the children are at 8 and 9. So here we go, 4, comparing to 8 and 9. Compares to the children, finds that 14 is the larger key. And it's really important that you swap with a larger key, because if you swapped with a smaller key, you can see that if we put 8 up here, then the heat property wouldn't be true on this side of the tree. So we all swap with the larger, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So 14 goes here, 2 goes here, 14 goes here, 2 goes here. Now importantly, max heapify will then look further down the tree. It's following this 2 down to make sure that it still isn't violating the heap property further down, but there's no children, so it returns. So now we come back and i is decremented to 3. So we look at the node in position 3, which is 3, and we compare it to 2i and 2i plus 1, 6 and 7, 9 and 10, and we find that its child 10 is larger, so we're going to swap those. And in the tree, and again it checks to see if there's any further children, and there aren't, so we can continue. So then max heap of 5 returns, and we decrement i down to 2. Now here things get a little bit more complex. We're going to look at position 2, positions 4 and 5, which are the children, so 2, 4, and 5. 16 is the largest key, so we're going to swap position 2 with position 5. But remember, max heapify is a recursive procedure that continues to work its way down the tree. So it calls itself recursively on position 5, and then looks at the children of that position and finds that the key here at position 5, so the children are 10 and 11, and finds that the key at position 10 is larger, so it's going to swap them. And also in the tree. And here it returns. And then we decrement to the final, to the root position, position 1. So we look at positions 2 and 3, the children. The larger one is 16. So we're going to swap the 4 and the 16. And in the tree. But having moved the key down, to the position 2, max heapify needs to recurse on A sub 2, so it looks at position 2 and it compares to 2i and 2i plus 1, positions 4 and 5, and it sees that 14 in position 4 is larger key, so it swaps those. And now again, having moved the key down to position 4, it re max heapify recurses there and checks positions 8 and 9 to see if everything's in order. And it's not. 8 is the larger key. OK. And then checking here, there's nothing else to check below. So max heap of 5 returns. And we now exit the for loop. And we are done. So let's take a look. Is this array a heap? Well, the array is what the tree is. 16, 14, 10, 8, 7, 9, 3, 2, 4, 1. Looks like, like I haven't made any errors. And uh, looking at the keys, all of the keys in the tree are bigger than the keys of their children. So that is a heap. So that concludes our introduction to how to build heaps. And next we will analyze the build max heap algorithm.